guys, uh, welcome to Unbiased Rugby. So, obviously we're coming up to the Six Nations at the end of the month, and most of the squads are starting to be released, but uh, I'm not going to go through all the squads, but this this, this specific video I'm going to go through the Irish squad. I did pay close attention uh, to some teams last year at the Rugby World Cup, and you know there are a few teams that I, I tried to uh, get to understand and learn more, and uh, the Irish, Irish team was one of them. So I'm just going to go through the squad, maybe a few selections how, who I'd see playing, see how Andy Farrell wants to actually uh, target the World Cup. I have a feeling he might be a little bit conservative, maybe not in the first game. I think the first game's against uh, Italy. I think there he can obviously... No, it's not Italy. Uh, but I think he can... Uh, there are one or two games where he can start experimenting because there are a few little, little niggly areas that... Uh, a lot of people have been chatting about that there, there are a few issues. Let me go through the sides. Okay, so the forwards, we've got uh, Max Deegan, uh, Keelan Doris, uh, Alton Delane, Todd Furlong, Keen Healy, Dave Heffern, Heffernan, Ian Henderson, Rob Her Herring, uh, Ronan Killo, David Kilcoyne, Jack McGrath, Jack O'Donoghue, Peter Armani, Tom O'Toole, uh, Andrew Porter, James Ryan, CJ Stunder, Devin Toner, and Josh van der Flee. Uh, the backs, we've got uh, Will, Will Edison, uh, Bundy Aki, uh, Billy Burns, uh, Ross Byrne, Andrew Conway, John Cooney, Keith Earls, Chris Farrell, Robbie Henshaw, Dave Carney, Jordan Lamar, Luke McGrath, Conan Murray, Gary Ringrow, Jonathan Sexton, and Jacob Stockdale. Uh, there are some development players uh, like uh, Ryan uh, Bird, Robert uh, Balcoon, Harry Byrne, and Will Connors. So yeah, it's 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 a pretty decent squad. Uh, there are a few little a few little omissions. Obviously, there's quite a few people that uh, that have retired, uh, so obviously they wouldn't be selected. A uh, few little areas that I think a lot of people have been talking about. A lot of concern is obviously the back three, the the makeup of the back three. Are the, are the back three that are currently playing, uh, I think the, the normal would, would be Peter Armani, uh, Josh van der Fleer, and CJ Stunder. I'm um, not 100% sure if, if uh, Farrell, Andy Farrell is going to change that. I think he needs to, he, he needs to, you've got to start from some kind of base, and if you just uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater, you know, you, you're in for a world of trouble. He understands uh, the team, the team structure. So I think he's, he might be a little bit more conservative. He's still got a long cycle ahead of him uh, before a World Cup or for uh, uh, the next couple of couple of years. Yes, at the end of the day, internationals are all about uh, winning, and uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, at the back row, um, I haven't been uh, super impressed with... Uh, Conor Murray's form in the Pro 14, uh, or even at the, the Champions Cup, uh, it's just his kicks just seem a little bit long, it, it's a little bit aimless. Uh, but I don't know. I think just think at uh, well, at international level, maybe he's the, he is the right choice. But uh, I'm hoping that he can get over that slump because his form just does not look right. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys agree with me on that, but uh, he just seems a little bit off and. and the kicks just, you know, normally those kicks are normally high and accurate and it just it just doesn't seem to be enough time for the, the wingers to obviously obviously compete for the hard ball. So yeah, just a, a little bit of a concern there. But I, I think he's, he is going to go with uh, Conor Murray at, at nine. I, I don't see him. He's going to put his trust in, in a bit of experience. Uh, looking at the back three, I don't think that's either. I don't think that's going to change either. I think it's still going to be Peter Armani, Josh van der Fleer, and CJ Stunder. <sighs> Even though CJ Stunder is probably my, one of my absolute all-time favorite players, ex-Bulls player, <clears throat> maybe position uh, the eight is not his position. I think he'd make, make a brilliant blindside uh, flanker moving across to six. I think that, that would really be his position because... Uh, yeah, I think he could learn a few new tricks. You know, I know Scott Berger eventually learned a few new tricks later on in his career, uh, offload, because uh, you just don't have that same kind of speed and impact, but you still have that uh, the, the rugby brain, and, and I think he really does have that. But I think moving him to a blind side, because I don't, I just don't see 
anyone close uh, for, for ball carrying ability. Even though CJ Stunder's ball carrying ability is not the same as it used to be, I still think he's one of the best ball carriers that uh, Ireland do have. Uh, and moving him to six would just give him, I, I just think it would give him a lot more freedom. Eight's a bit more bit more specialised. I'm not sure who would take over the eight, eight slot. Maybe you guys can put it down in the comments who you think would be eight. But yeah, we're looking at, uh, see, I would have, uh, see, <sighs> props. <sighs> I'm not sure about Keen Healy's form at the moment. Uh, I have been watching, I've been watching a few Leinster games. I'm going to be honest, guys. Uh, even though Leinster have been winning, I just don't think they've been put under enough pressure. I've, I've just watched this last game. Uh, I watched the game with Leon last night. Uh, and it, it was okay. It was it was good. Uh, it just... Try watch that game and then try watch maybe an Exeter game uh, and just see how Exeter play uh, from how they get out of their 22, how they play across the whole park and how their intensity really increases in the 22. Leinster do exactly the same things, but it just doesn't seem it just doesn't seem the same. Uh, I'm, I, maybe I've, I've got it wrong. Maybe you guys can put it down in the comments. But yeah, that's a tiny little thing. You know, they have, I think they've won every single game. I think they had one draw. So maybe I'm pulling at straws there. But I'd probably still have tight furlong at, as my tight head. Uh, mess around with the, the, the loose head. Uh, James Ryan has to be in the team. I, I like Devin Toner. I think he's really good at uh, line-out. I, I think he, he offers something a little bit different. And I think he's got, a, he's got a real point to prove from missing out on the World Cup. But James Ryan is probably one of my all-time favorite uh, forwards. I think he is in the top five forwards in the world. Uh, and that's a list of uh, Mario Toji, uh, James Ryan, uh, Brody Retallick. Uh, uh, some, some of the other players' form has dipped a little bit. Uh, but, you know, we're talking outstanding players uh, from uh, Adi Sevilla. Peter Steph to Toy. Now these are exceptional players, and, and James Ryan is part of that list. Uh, one of the biggest talents to come out of Ireland. I see him being the next uh, Brian O'Driscoll. I know it's a, a completely different position, but I think he's going to be there a hell of a long time. I'm, I was shocked. I thought he would um, make captain, uh, but maybe it's not his time yet. Uh, Jonathan Sexton being captain. Hmm. I would. Oh, I just hope he I hope he has the right kind of attitude with the refs. The refs are really going to come down hard on him if he has that same kind of that same kind of attitude uh, with the refs, uh, especially at international level. Because you got to have. I'm just trying to think of the Southern Hemisphere refs that could probably be around. Uh, who's the South African? Yucca Paper takes no no rubbish from anyone. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, with him as captain. Um, I've never really been a big fan of Flowers being captain. That's just me. Uh, I think it's a better position suited for either uh, outside centre or a uh, one of the uh, tight forwards. That's just my personal opinion. So yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think it's an exceptionally good squad. There's some young guns coming through, some good players coming through. I think there's a lot of experience there. I think Ireland are going to do fairly well in this uh, Six Nations. Uh, I think that the two main rivals that they're going to have is probably England and uh, Wales. I think uh, Wales have also got an exceptionally good squad and they've got some really good young talent coming through. Yeah. And France, I, I, I haven't seen France for, for some time. I didn't really I like them at the World Cup, but I hear they've got lots of changes happening. Listen, guys, what do you think of the team? Uh, I think it's an exceptionally great squad. I think it's a lot of depth. There's a lot of there's, there's a lot to be built on from this. And I think uh, uh, Andy Farrell's probably the right person to take it to the next level. But what do you think of my idea of, of James Ryan as captain? Maybe not yet. Like I said, CJ Stunder at six. I think that's a, 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 a good call. And yeah, other players to watch out for. Lamar, uh, Jordan Lamar, probably one of my favorite outstanding players from the World Cup. He was at the World Cup. Sure, was at the World Cup, <laughs> whatever. And uh, so, yeah, excellent squad. I see them doing really well in this uh, Six Nations. But listen, guys, uh, we're so close to the Six Nations, so close to Super Rugby. Uh, it's been really exciting times ahead. Hope you have an absolutely wonderful week. Chat soon. Cheers.